What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Warrior Wednesday, where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better warrior. So today's topic of conversation is going to be a lot less philosophy and a lot more science. We're talking, do I need to be like super jacked to be a good warrior? What's the difference between being like super jacked or lean and mean? There's a lot of misconceptions out there um, about like, <laughs> like what it takes physically to be a really good warrior. I know we've touched on this before. I think it was a week or two ago where we discussed um, physical standards for, for being a modern warrior. My take on it, and uh, obviously, you know, since I said it, it's pretty smart, right? But seriously speaking, we, we got to touch on this because if you're like me, and I'm, I'm like 38, right? So I'm like getting ancient. If you're like me, uh, even if you're not that old, or if you're younger i should say um you you probably have grown up with some respect the archetype of like arnold schwarzenegger sylvester stallone like what's his name jesse whatever like predator rambo like those movies right where like the special forces guys like behind enemy lines but like somehow they are all incredibly fucking jacked and they look like they've been on their like fourth course of steroids for the day. Like, <laughs> and uh, it's, I mean, it's clearly, it's not realistic, right? Like any of us who know about that, that world, like, no, it, it ain't realistic. Like there's no gyms out in the middle of the woods like that. Like there's, you're not shooting fucking steroids in the middle of a fucking mission. Like it's just, it's not, you don't look like that. If you're actually like, a green beret or like a special forces guy, like some of them do. And I've, I've met a bunch. Um, some of them are quite big, but again, it's not the same, same look as it's, I think, you know what I'm talking about, right? They're not actually out there with two bandoliers of bullets across their chest and no shirt, but like war paint on like, you know, get out of here, man. It's a cool thought. Right. And for some reason in the nineties, we all believed it. We all did. And we all kind of like, I don't know why, but like, we all believed that like for some, somehow there were like guys out there like that, but, um, there are, but not quite like that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So do you need to look like that to be like an extremely efficient killing machine? Do you? I mean, that's, that's, it's a, it's a question that a lot of professional warriors might scoff at, but a lot of a lot of people like who don't know, don't know. And I'm going to answer it. No, <laughs> no, you absolutely don't. And if you look at, if you look at really professional, like good fighters, and I'm saying like hand to hand combat, like mixed martial artists, Muay Thai fighters, boxers, jujitsu, professional jujitsu competitors, like real experts in hand to hand combat. Um, they're skinny, dude. Like they're, they're fucking skinny. And then, I'm going to take it a step further. Look at like green berets who go out there doing small unit tactics, like doing everyone loves this term recce shit, right? They're out in the middle of the woods for like a month or they're out in the desert for like Lord knows how long, right? Maybe they've got like a fob in the desert they can go to. But like, if you're doing like old school nineties, like woodland camo, BDU Alice kit, like cool, like reconnaissance shit, right? Like, <laughs> you know, like everyone thinks of, right? Where the helicopter chops you, like go. And you're living out of a, a, a pack for like a month. You're not, you're not, you're not lifting weights. You might not even be, probably aren't doing like push ups <laughs> in your off time, right? Because you're conserving energy. And you might be in the middle of a fucking hole, like, with a fucking camera, like just observing for like weeks, potentially a week, two weeks. I don't know. A while. <laughs> and you could be there for a little while where you, you go, you know, four hour watches on and off, whatever it is, hour on, hour off, whatever they do, whatever their schedule is. Everyone seems to do it differently, but stuff like that, you're not, you're not going to look super jacked. You're just, you're not, you're, you're conserving your calories. You're eating two MREs a day. You know, you're, you're, you're not, again, you're not like in between, like going from, from one fucking hole to the other. You're not like sitting there doing push ups either, man. Like, and you're doing a lot of cardio. You're hiking a lot. Um, you're, you're going around. You're just, your, your body de is depleted 
of glycogen. Like it, you, you're skinny is what I'm trying to say. Um, if you're doing cool guy shit like that, reconnaissance and, and all that stuff that we think about, um, a lot of the times you're a lot skinnier than, than you are Jack. Now, if you're in your 20s, which most of those guys are, and you're, you know, in peak physical condition as it is, then yeah, sure, you're going to look shredded. You're going to look good no matter what. But you're not going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Predator or um, Sylvester Stallone in Rambo. You're just, you're not. Um there's advantages to being that big. No one's going to fuck with you on the street, generally speaking. You know, I have my old bodybuilding coach was, um, I'll use his name, Ken. You know, he used to tell me a lot of funny stories. And one story he told me where <laughs> there was like a road rage thing, right? And the guy jumped out of his car, started running in his car, and Kenny stepped out of his car. And he just, he stood there. And the guy literally <laughs> stops in his tracks, looks at him. And runs back to his own car and drives off. <laughs> or even look at like Ronnie Coleman. You, some of you guys who know about bodybuilding know Mr. Ronnie Coleman, black guy who like would squat 800 pounds and like I think he had the world record deadlift for a while. Incredibly jacked dude. He was a cop. And he said in his whole career, he got in like one fight because all the criminals would want to fight his colleagues. But as soon as he showed up, they were like, no, nah, whatever, fine, just take me to jail. Like, fuck, no. And so. <laughs> Being that Jack absolutely psychologically has its perks. Um, also, you can pick somebody up and fucking move them around. Or if you do swing on someone and connect, you fucking clobber their head in. Obviously. Are those guys dangerous? Absolutely. Do I want to fight them? No, I fucking don't. Um, have I fought them? Yes. And even on accident, like at jujitsu or like <laughs> in, in MMA, like they will hurt you just by accident because they're so fucking strong. So it's not like they're easy to beat in a fight by any means. Like they've got a lot of rage and a lot of strength. Like you don't want to fight them. But are they agile? No. Are they flexible? No. And do they have good cardio, generally speaking? Absolutely not. If you want to be that scientifically jacked, it's a scientific process. And I used to be uh, a hobbyist bodybuilder. So I know a bit about this, right? And I only stopped bodybuilding because I got into fighting and I wasn't um, willing to take the copious amount of steroids that it would take for me to actually compete in bodybuilding. But along the way, I learned a lot about nutrition and about the science of building muscle and concentric and eccentric like holds and all this stuff, right? That a lot of guys look into. So I've noticed one thing is that bodybuilders and guys who are just trying to strictly put on muscle mass, you can't do a lot of cardio because it deprives your body of glycogen. And frankly speaking, it burns muscle. So, um, I mean, that's why you see like a lot of these fighters and a lot, I've got friends from the gym that I train at, which I don't use the name of, but the, the gym that I train at the MMA gym, they're professional, they're professional fighters, whether they're a professional jujitsu athlete or a professional MMA athlete. And some of these kids, you would look at them and they look fucking skinny and you're like, oh, I can just throw them around. But little do you know, they make their money by hurting people. So there's that, but being scientifically jacked like that. Dude, like you're not doing a lot of cardio and they prioritize the type of cardio they do prioritize is for burning fat. So they're walking on the treadmill. Um, the one thing that you'll hear from a lot of these guys is, yeah, I do like an hour of cardio, but what they don't say after that is that cardio that they do for an hour, that fasted cardio, they're walking on the treadmill and they don't want to get out of breath too hard. Because that's like the optimal zone that it takes to burn fat. And that's all they're trying to do with the cardio. They're not trying to be able to last in any type of endurance or any fight. Some guys do hit cardio, right? Where they like on the bike or on the stepper or whatever, where, you know, they'll take their heart, up, heart rate up really high for like a minute, get in that optimal fat burning zone. They have a, a watch or something on. And once they hit their, you know, optimal fat burning zone, they take it down. They, they let their heartbeat kind of like return a little bit. Then they take it up. They take it down. They let their heartbeat start dropping. As soon as they reach a certain zone, they take it up again. And they do that for like 15, 20 minutes, so like high interval and, in, you know, training. And that's pretty good for burning fat as well. But again, they're trying to burn calories they're trying to burn fat and they're trying to conserve their muscle mass. So whilst bodybuilding is absolutely a sport, they are absolutely athletes 
it is absolutely hard what they do. They're depriving themselves. They're very exact with their macros, their micros, their calories, everything they eat, everything that goes into their body is tracked. It's an absolute sport. Is it healthy? Uh, sure. If you're not taking copious amounts of like fucking steroids, sure, it is. Yeah. But um, the problem with that is if you've ever been in combat, whether that's with guns or with fighting hand to hand or like anything, you'll know that it's not, it takes a lot of cardio. And when you get in that stress zone of like, fuck, shit's happening. Like, fuck, I need to like, get behind cover. Like, fuck, like, or, you know, like, fuck, I'm getting hit. Like, blah, like, when that shit happens and your brain is about to like go into the black, so to speak, that happens. And if your cardio isn't fucking sick, like if you don't have a lot of cardio and prioritize cardio, you're you're, you're not going to do that well. And I've seen it before where um, it was actually a tactical response. I'm going to leave the names out of it, but it was the um, high risk civilian contractor course, one of them. And um this these two kids came in they're pretty jacked and they were like pretty good shape it looked like dude we all we did was one ftx like not even like an hour into the ftx and they were gassed gassed and I, i'm sitting there and most of us were like okay we're a little tired like for sure we'd been running around and like shooting and scooting but i mean like we dealt with it it was hot as fuck but like these two kids who were like super jacked they were like oh, 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 oh. and like some of the the tactical response staff had to come over and be like, dude, like, what the fuck? Like, you look super, like, you look like you're in good shape. What the fuck? And they're like, oh, oh. It, and, and I've seen it time and time again in jujitsu, too, where guy will come in, rah, 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 you know, whatever. And um, you get him on the mat and you start rolling with him. And it's like a minute into the round and they're like, hum, hum, laying on the mat with their tongue out, right? And you're like, what the fuck, dude? Like, Let's roll. And they're like, ah, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, I can't. And it's like, dude, like you're like fucking like you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but like you're fucking dead here on the mat. And I haven't even like gone hard with you yet. It's been a minute. Like, so yeah, having that much muscle mass, can you pick up heavy ammo cans and like move a belt fed around? Like, sure. Yeah. Can you like probably move a mortar around? Like, yeah, great. Cool. I'm going to hand it to you. But like once we really start going for like a mile <laughs> and you got all that shit on. And you're carrying my whatever equipment it is, field phones, radio, weapon, extra ammo, like you're not going to last. And so that's my point here is there's absolutely nothing wrong with being very strong. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of muscle mass. But if you are prioritizing your strength over your cardio, that is an inefficient warrior in my opinion. Somebody who needs the circumstances to be exactly right, right? Like somebody who needs to eat six times a day, this many calories. And if you get less than that, you'll freak out. You need this much glutamine and like this much BCAAs and like every day, like, you know, all of the blah, 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 blah. Like you've got everything set up. And if you step outside the boundaries of that, you start falling apart. Like, and I've, you might laugh, but no, like I've seen it. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a funny story here and I'm going to leave the gentleman's name out of it, but a bodybuilding coach that I had, he, uh, every morning he would order, um, I think it was 15 eggs, <laughs> uh, for his breakfast at the gym. And like, maybe it was like five pieces of toast, 15 eggs and orange juice. And I forget that might've been it. Um, but he had like the same thing every day and it was like 10 egg whites and like, or 12 egg whites and like three eggs with the yolk or some, something like that, right? Anyway, one day <laughs> they accidentally gave him, um, I think it was like 10 egg yolks, eggs with the yolk and like five egg whites or something, right? <laughs> and so he opens up the little to-go box and he goes, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like what's, <laughs> what's up, man? He's like, <laughs> he turns the box around. He's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, it looks like they gave you egg yolks. Like, because you're going to have to eat egg yolks today. And he goes, no. <laughs> this is back when they had flip phones, right? Uh, they had smartphones, but he carried a flip phone for a reason. So he takes the flip phone, he starts going, 
and he crushes it in his hand, the flip bone, and he throws it across the gym. He's like, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> but like, I've seen, I've seen this a number of times where like the bodybuilder gets thrown off his game by some like minute thing. And it's just the nature of the beast where like, if you're that scientific and exact with your meals, and I've been there myself too, and like you miss one meal, not only do you get super fucking hungry and like super agitated, but like your whole world starts falling apart. And when you're like that, you're certainly going to be no good to me in combat. Um, because I might, you know, if I'm your patrol leader, I, I might let you eat at some point. But if we have work to do, we have work to do first. And when you're on your rest cycle, grab as much chow as you can, shove it down your fucking neck, and then get ready to go again, right? Like, that's that's what real combat is like. Um, and again, I've only been through, like, field training exercises, and I've never been shot at. I'm going to be very honest with you on that. But I've been through enough, you know, weeks of field training and, you know, miles gear and mock battles and shit like that, that I, I at least know the drill, right? I'm not saying I'm some kind of like badass. I'm not. But I've been through the training. I've got probably, honestly, like probably 12, 16 weeks, something like that so far of like small unit experience. So, again, no expert, but I, I know I know how it goes. Um, If you're that. If you're that type of athlete, stick to what you're good at. But you're not necessarily a good minute man, blah, 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 right? Soldier, whatever. Um, you might look great, but <laughs> once we start really operating, you're going to be, like, upset. Take it all sort of like guys who do cool, like super cool guys, like CIA type guys, right? Like, dude, they're, they might go into the job at peak physical condition, but once you start operating like that, you're in plain clothes. You're in hotels, you're in shitty airport hotels, you, you're in foreign countries, you're getting like not good food, not good nutrition, you're, you're not working out like optimally, you're, you're sitting in a car for eight hours, like you're, you're just, you're talking to people and you're, you might be drinking, like you're not, you know, like you're not in super good shape at that point. Um, now, I've been, like, when I was at Blackwater, and again, I didn't work for Blackwater, but I went and trained there. I did one of their, um, what was it, individual protection specialist courses, right? So I saw a lot of, like, who I assume were, like, Delta guys and stuff like that there. And they had a sick gym, like a sick gym there. It was cool. And, um, you know, those guys are big. Like, you can generally tell. I, I've, I've been able to learn along the way, like, who's who looks like what, right? Like the Green Berets are usually a lot leaner and meaner. I think it's the Delta guys who are usually pretty big. Um, Seals tend to be lean and mean, bigger than the Green Berets, but not Delta style. And I, I could be wrong about this, but this is kind of what I've surmised so far, right? But anyway, like some, like there are some guys out there who are like seriously in great shape and they're also seriously big and seriously jacked and like they're football type player guys and football player type guys. And like, that's just their genetics. Right. And, um, awesome. Like, cool. And if you can be that big and fight well, and also like not give a fuck if you don't eat for a day, like shit right on. Like you're, you're a fucking, you're a Greek God, man. Like you're a true warrior. That's awesome. But Generally speaking, generally speaking, that's not the norm it's from what I've seen. I could be wrong, but because I don't have like special operations experience like like some of you guys do, but that's what I've seen from my limited experience in this field. Um, being super jacked does not necessarily make you a good warrior. If you are super jacked and you can do all that stuff, you are a fucking superhuman and like <laughs> salute you for it. But generally speaking, you're the skinnier guys you, you might not think are able to kill you with their hands easily are, <laughs> and you would never know. And that's a good thing sometimes. So that's my two cents on it. Um, learn to operate without a lot of calories. Learn how to ignore the hunger, ignore the pain, suck it up. Um, Learn how to control your adrenaline dumps when they happen, because sometimes you're going to go for months on end necessarily with 
with not a whole lot of conditioning and you're just going to have to go into it in really good peak physical condition and um work out when you can prioritize your cardio and that's what i'm going to leave it at guys is prioritize your fucking cardio like that yes yeah, stay strong do push-ups like lift weights but prioritize your cardio because when when shit fucking happens and like whatever it is right like you're being questioned by a foreign police or like you're like <laughs> in the middle of a firefight or like you're like shit's happening around you and you need to operate now or like in my case when i used to go into burning buildings and shit like it was like all of a sudden all of a fucking sudden it was like from zero to 100 and that's when it counts that's when your cardio counts that's when your your mental your mindset counts and it's like you have to be able to be an already good cardio condition to like withstand those adrenaline dumps from my experience take it as it is um take that's just my personal opinion other guys might have different opinions although i think that if you've actually been through um some of some of this type of stuff you're more than likely to kind of hear what i'm saying um if not agree with most of it so that's my opinion prioritize your cardio definitely do strength and conditioning as, as much as you can but prioritize your cardio stretch be limber and um be ready to run hard and survive those adrenaline dumps and be able to think clearly through them would be my advice to any warrior out there prioritize that learn to suffer and do it well all right guys until next time please remember that you are your first and last line of defense check out our website gutterfightingsecrets.com we got um all the online training training is available there we've also got merch and um we've got dvds but please don't order it because i'm like not in the country right now and i can't ship them out for the next little while so um if you want to order something order one of our online programs and don't forget like comment subscribe share i ask you to do that because it drives us up in the algorithm more people will see this stuff and i really want to get a good community of like-minded warriors out there together and so that we can build each other up have discussions right like if you if you have a differing opinion be polite but put it down in the comments let me know what you think about this do you agree let me know right like let's get a conversation rolling here these this is what these videos are designed for stay safe out there warriors and i'll see you on the next warrior wednesday and i'll see you this saturday for another hand-to-hand -hand combat video cheers guys <laughs>